Hue Peva, Olin Harsha Munusinger. I'm an architect and urban designer, and uh, I've been talking about sustainable urbanism as well as uh, how cities can be responsible for its living societies for a long time. Most of my research work, as well as papers, you find on ResearchGate and uh, Google Scholar. So, where can we start? What is a city? And why people came to city? Why people want to live in the city? This is how we have to understand how the city can be developed for its own societies. Aristotle said, men came to live in cities to live a good life and they remain in a group to lead a good life. So when people come from all over the country, from different villages, different uh, other settings to the cities, they always form what we call societies. These societies have diverse values because these people are bringing different values. But then at the end, they learn a particular behavior. They come into consensus. Okay, this is what going to be our society. This is what going to be our particular urban culture. I'm quite sure you all have heard of Louis Worth who said urbanism as a way of life. We have to look at the size of the place we are living. We have to look at how people respond to the density of the place. And then, of course, we have to look at the, the diversity of the place. These three are really important. Have we ever looked at the place where we have built our cities? Have we ever looked at the people who came to live in our cities? Have we ever looked at the, the types of societies or the types of diverse values or the value systems that they have formed in order to, to live that so-called good life. What's good life? Good life means actually they should be comfortable in the place where they are living. They should, they should be able to, to live the way they want to live, right? But what have we, urban planners, urban designers, architects, what have we done? We have completely neglected who came to our cities, where the city is built. We have been following the, the so-called modern movements, styles, and, and etc. etc. One of the, the most uh, difficult decisions that we have made is actually about land use patterns. We misunderstood land use patterns and we made land use patterns in order to make profits in the name of zoning. The zoning may make things easier but it would actually result in uh, in uh, in compartmentalizing the society we do not have everybody living in the same place we do not have people living and working and schooling their children and etc etc in the same place they they run around like you know like like uh, like rats uh, or, or buffaloes and these rat trees and the 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 buffalo run as we call them the, the cities have been developing like that. We architects, urban planners, or urban designers, we never had the time to look at it. Stop back, stop, and, and see what we have done, whether it is right or wrong. We never had that opportunity. Now we have that opportunity. The COVID-19, the, the so-called pandemic, has stopped us all. It stopped our running. Now we have the time we never had. So I took that opportunity to look at a case that is uh, very close to me, a case that I have been looking at for a long time. Colombo, the commercial capital of Sri Lanka. If you go, if you look at Colombo, if you Google Colombo, all what you see is actually high rise buildings popping up from each and every corner of the city. You will hear their future plans. What do they have? They, they are talking about uh, light railways. They are talking about, uh, you know, underground tunnels and uh, overhead bridges and etc. 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 So, it's it's a place where people would would drive and run around and that's it. Nobody lives there, isn't it? So, so that is how the Colombo has been developed. So earlier, when Sri Lanka got independence from the British Empire, that was in 1948. Some scholars wrote about Sri Lanka as Colombo and suburbs. Everybody has to come to Colombo, had to come to Colombo during the colonial era for their services. To work, to educate their children, right? 
and for health facilities, they had to come. And all the commercial activities. Has it changed now? No. Not, not, not at all. It is still developing in the same way. So that is why Colombo, with about 2.5 million people in Colombo and its immediate surroundings, about 1.5 million people are coming to the city every day for these kind of services. So to me, Colombo is a mess actually. Because if you look at the ecological footprint of Colombo, it's really, really big. And Sri Lanka used to have hydropower, but hydropower is not the main thing now we have. Now Sri Lanka actually has mostly diesel generated power and coal generated power. What does that mean? We are polluting the environment. And then all these high rise buildings are, are, are cladded with uh, some uh, metal and various other sort of uh, things and then of course the glaze facading and they are all throwing back the 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 heat so if you look at the urban heat island effect in colombo and ecological footprint in colombo you will realize that colombo is not a place for person to lead a good life not a comfortable life air pollution is getting worse all the time because there are so many vehicles coming Public transport is not good enough, so everybody drives almost, right? And lots of uh, motorcycles coming to the city and etc, etc, etc. So what have we been talking about right now? I'm suggesting that Colombo should stop building any more high rises and making people living in those tall silos. I wrote a paper called uh, Living in Silo. And that was about actually high rise living in Colombo. And then I also wrote a paper called uh, Responsible Urbanism. That is about how Colombo can be made responsible for its, uh, its societies. <coughs> so my suggestion is that we have to accept the fact that now the city is saturated. Now the city is, you know, it's almost like a Las Vegas again. Ecological footprint is really huge. Urban heat island effect is really bad. So let's think about, about stopping any more big buildings in Colombo. Privatized spaces in Colombo. People are not anymore, you know, getting together. There are no spaces as such. Historic buildings are all decorated and then of course converted into very expensive restaurants and cafes and various kinds of other things that most of those uh, citizens cannot afford to go there. So tourists and now COVID-19 with no tourism at all, all those places are actually haunted, right? So aren't we wasting our, our resources as such? So most of the urban development, most of the cities, not only in Colombo, everywhere in the world, if you look at, actually it's not built for the societies, built for tourists, built for richer people, they are not bringing people together, these cities. They are actually, uh, you know, compartmentalizing the societies. Rich and poor, colors and etc, etc, various kinds of uh, disharmony you find always. So the diversity is there, but the diversity means actually in different quarters. Every quarter, no diversity, right? So what I've been suggesting to Colombo is to develop regional centers around Colombo so that, uh, so that actually uh, it, uh, it will stop lots of people coming to the city every day. There are lots of cities that can be considered as so-called satellite towns that can make people comfortable very easily. They can live and work in their own centers. They don't have to bring all the services with such an expensive manner because you can provide those services within the place where they are. So this is what we have been talking about, developing satellite towns around Colombo and then of course re reforming Colombo's land use pattern. Because right now Colombo's land use pattern is such that, that we have we had compartmentalized the city. So it's not one city anymore. It's kind of, you know, Lots of cities inside one city, like 
and lots of those things are not really cities even they're very they're very uh, you know they're, they're almost like big villages I would say no diversity and the societies are compartmentalized so they are not living in societies etc 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 so let's let's go back let's step back take this opportunity of COVID think about it how we can reform the land use pattern and how we can supplement this madness of coming to the city by developing those uh, satellite towns. I hope that I'm making some sense to you so that way we can make our cities sustainable and I can, we can make our cities responsible for its own societies. So this is my way of looking at sustainable urbanism. Thank you very much. Wish you a good day. Hey, Pup.